second meeting of the Wairika City Council to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Please silence your phones. Please silence your uh, cell phones. Um, public comments. This is the time for public comments. Council may take ask questions but may take no action during the public comment section of the meeting except to direct staff to prepare a report or place an item on a future agenda. If you are here to make comments on a specific agenda item, you may speak at that time. If not, this is the time. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Speakers, please speak from the podium. State your name and mailing address so city staff can respond to you in regards to your comments or provide you with information if appropriate. You are not required to state in your name and address if you do not desire to do so. Are there any public comments at this time on items that are not on the agenda? No, come on down. Welcome. You took a shortcut. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people up here. Good evening. My name is John Adamson. I live at 1534 Village Way, Mount Shasta, California. Uh, I have been a, a citizen in Siskiyou County for since 1956, on and off, however it works that way. Uh, currently, I am running for the position of Board of Trustee for the College of the Siskiyou's uh, Community College. Um, the reason I'm running is I'm very honored that they believe that I can actually help them with my skill set and do a lot of things. I have been the land use planning and CEQA consultant to those folks for 20 to 25 years. The reason I was in that position is my wife has been their architect for 25 years and I do as I'm told. And so that's pretty much how that works out. Um, I have worked st uh, strictly for the Board of Trustees, not for the Presidents, to make sure that environmental compliance was always met and everybody was above board with it. Uh, when Jim Hardy decided that he was not going to run, I ended up with a lot of calls saying, we need you to go ahead and step up to the plate. I tried, and I, I have to say this, I tried very hard to find somebody else. It just didn't work. And so consequently, I am actually running for that position. Um, I am here today because this is the last at-large election that the district will probably have. I say probably because there are a couple people on the board that kind of believe that an at-large election is really not the way to kind of deal with this. Right now, the way that the uh, president, uh, uh, Stephen Schu uh, uh, Schoonmaker, is, is looking at this situation is from the chancellor's office. And again, having had 20 to 25 years experience working with the chancellor's office on legal issues, um, it's interesting to see how this is going to actually play out. Uh, I feel like I'm in a baseball game. I'm just kind of sitting along first baseline watching the game. Um, but a lot of the people are concerned about this kind of situation. In two years, 2020, we will probably have it so each trustee is elected from their own area and no other area. I find it a little disconcerting only because I see us as one community. I see not just the Wee campus, I see the Wairika campus. We are the fifth largest county in the state area-wise. We are the 13th uh, county with the least amount of population. In other words, we're 45 out of 58. We're not Contra Costa, Cal uh, Contra Costa County, Santa Rosa, Sierra, I can name a handful of these things. Um, the idea is we spread quite a bit of an area, and the idea, we need to kind of step back and embrace the fact that we're going to actually have two campuses. My idea is with uh, the approval of other members that were on the board uh, and other people in the area that are from, say, Scott Valley, that kind of situation, is that you know we need to kind of, we need to start concentrating a little more on the resource values that we have here to go ahead and work the resources that we have agriculture is very very key and of course certificate and credentialing that's that's very very key 
A new issue just arrived in August would be one that the community, uh, the California State University system decided that remedial education they were not going to cover anymore. That is one of the three doctrine from the, Don the, the Donahoe Act of 1960 that basically established why community colleges are in a position that they have to cover three equally recognized doctrine. One of them is remedial education. It's going to come down on us. Where do I fit into this? I've been a team player with the community college here for a good 20, 25 years. They see me as a known quantity. Again, I am trying to reach out as far as I can at the at-large district to let people see my face, see my name, and understand that I'm trying to look at this as this is one family, this is one community. I hope I am able to do that because even if it comes down to a point where we have to represent our own little areas, um, I'm still, I'm going to be somebody that stands up and represents the entire family. Again, I'm always available for comments. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for coming. I, I have a quick question. So you betcha, Counselor. I can't, I can't really see it, but are those Dolphin Submariner or Surface Warfare? <laughs> Thank you. I can't you. see from you. <laughs> Rob, you're a good guy. Um, <laughs> I'm not one to blow my own horn and everything else. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm no politician. And one of the things that people told me, you gotta play the veteran card. And I said, man, you just don't do that if you were in the group I was in. I was in fast attack submarines. I was in the 590 USS uh, uh, Sculpin, SSN 590. My sister ship was the 589 Scorpion that lost everybody in the crew. Ooh. There were only five ships of that one. I was one of the first sailors, uh, people assigned to the 688 class, Los Angeles class, as well as the 689 to make sure they made it out because it was a political thing. I'm a fast attack sailor. Um, I have a lot of time playing the Cold War game. Um, that's, that's what I tell people. And it's just one of these things that, thank you very much for recognizing that. This is not my style. Again, I'm not a politician, but I'm trying to follow the lead to, to, so people can recognize that I am a veteran. Uh, that's one of the things I'm very concerned about with our school because we're gonna have an influx of veterans. I wanna make sure that we're covered for Shasta College is getting a brand new building built off of a grant. I don't think we even have a council in the school yet. I've been talking to the veterans representative here, who picks on me because I'm Navy and he's not. And, um, I'm not picking on you. I'm I Navy. know you're not, sir. So. <laughs> he's I'm Navy. Navy. You're good. Thank you, counselor. <laughs> He'll pick on you. Okay, there we go. I can pick uh, on you. Pick I'm an Air Force okay. brat. Um, so that's kind of where it kind of comes from, from there. But thank you very much for recognizing. That I, I truly appreciate thank you for that. your service. Yes, yes thank, thank you for your service and thank good you luck. Your time. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank you. Any other comments from the public at this time on items that are not on the agenda? Okay. So, item number one discussion, possible action, consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion or a member of the audience wishes to comment on an item. City Manager recommends approval of the following consent calendar items. A, approval ratification of payments issued from October 4th through October 18th, 2018. B, approval of minutes of the meeting held October 4th, 2018. And C, approval of August 2018 Treasurer's Report on cash on hand, excuse me, on cash and budget to actual. What are the wishes of the council? Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd just like to pull 1C just for uh, some detailed clarification. Okay. Any others, or do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the consent calendar 1A and B. Okay. Second. Do I, okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Items uh, 1A and B are approved. Council Member Bachego, item 1C. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just gonna turn to uh, Red Hogan, I only have a few more meetings to do this with, so <laughs> he takes Take this with, uh, with a certain amount of glee. Um, if she could just uh, talk to the uh, budget to actuals and, and tell us uh, if we're on track overall, if, uh, if the numbers are building the right way for any big ticket items to come, I would appreciate that. Um, so okay. the budget to actuals, it's early because we still um, on this, uh, have some accruals that are coming in for the prior fiscal year. 
um, just got, um, I think after issuance, this, an issuance of this report, another adjustment in the enterprise funds. But yes, we're fine um, thus far year to date. I did want to mention that the um, building fund, uh, we'll have some adjustments on that because of the timing between the entry year for the um, police, police building, station. police okay. station, and you'll notice that um, cash on that, we're down to, um, of what we've allocated the cash, about 431,000. I can tell you since then, we've, we've flipped over into the That's negative, right. so we're running on our own um, unallocated funds until we are able to complete the construction and execute the, um, the certificate of participation um, with the USDA, and I can tell you that's in the works. And that's as my far question. You. Can we not recoup any of that funding from USDA on our loan until it's finished? That's correct. That's the way it's structured. Mm -hmm. uh, so we lend ourselves the money ahead of time and then get it back. Yes. Right. Correct. But the good news is is that we're not running into the deficit until September. So really, cash flow wise, it will be about three to four months, depending on when the. Uh, the actual um, closing of the bond, of the certificates of participation occurs, which we're we're targeting for January, and I say that because I think um, there may be that's the earliest I think USDA will be able to respond to um, all the documents in close. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, Mark. Do, do we have an estimated completion date for the police station? Uh, as far as construction, I'd probably have to defer me be to Cindy in that project. And, and I'm, I'm, of course, saying. I'm sorry. It, what? I'm saying winter. Yeah. <laughs> what did Cindy say? We're on schedule. Oh, on schedule. Yeah. That tells us a lot. Yeah. On schedule is <laughs> like November, December, January. Yeah. 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 Schedule. It, uh, it's my understanding that we're getting close. I think yeah. if there's a walkthrough on. 1024 that some of us are attending and I can get you more information on that. Is that correct, Cindy? It's a, it's a regular um, like status meeting, meeting and if you're welcome to come, I'll let them know. Yes, I'd like to come. Yeah, I'd like to come. I'd like yeah, to be it'll probably be good. It's, yeah. it's coming along very nicely. I will say that. So. You should be. Yeah. So I'll still be around when they open the door? I hope so. 1024 this, this, is the walkthrough. This is this is why we don't have specific dates because of questions like that because I don't really know. Okay, any other questions on the financials? No. Okay, then do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the August 2018 treasury report and cash and budget to actual. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Reddit. Okay, item number two, discussion, possible action, adopt resolution authorizing the city manager to award a construction contract for the community theater heating and air conditioning upgrade project and to execute related documents. What kind of good news do you have for us? <laughs> Not. That's what I thought. <laughs> so, I'll take that. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, Matt. Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, October 11th, we opened bids um, for the community theater HVAC, which Includes the electrical, um, it's heating and air conditioning and electrical. There, we received two bids. Um, staff dug in and evaluated them as the, as we always do, and found errors within both bids. So we only had two. <coughs> correct. One was local, I understand. Correct. So we we went through the bids as is standard. Um, found some errors internally, staff. <coughs> came to a decision that required a conference call in with our city attorney to verify that we were correct in our thinking. Um, the two both had errors and in essence were both unresponsive bids. So our recommendation on this is that uh, the council reject all bids for the upgrade project and rebid the project. Well, that's disappointing. It is disappointing. So two contractors filled out the forms wrong? In essence, yes. So we don't help them with the, the forms, right? They fill out the forms, the bid, and they give them to us, and they should follow the instructions, Correct. right? There are instructions in the bid packets that they, yeah. should, they must follow and to and the letter. And they're specific, right? And neither of the bids were to the letter. And I understand that December is a pretty busy month mm -hmm. at the community theater. There is. So 
Public Works staff is working toward uh, alternative heating source an emergency in case the system does kick down on us in the middle of those. So we will have that under control by the time that those reservations are in full swing. Well, I understand that uh, heaters work back by the actors. So the actors will be warm and the audience will wear coats. Right. Well, also, it's intermittent. Right. So. Intermittent. Well, so that the, the HVAC system doesn't always work, which is what the, the concern is. So uh, it may be that we don't have to turn on the alternative heating sources because they work, but we yeah. need to be ready in yeah. case they don't. But we, we can't, we don't want to allow um, now with the timing of the way it is. It was so tight beforehand that um, we don't want to have walls torn open and holes drilled through. Yeah. So what's the, the new schedule? Through. We have to rebid, right? Yes, we need to rebid and that's a minimum of 10 days okay. on the street. So it goes to CIP list and back to the builders exchanges. And so these contractors know that they messed up on the paperwork basically? Yes, and so been, are they going to resubmit then? Both Is that been what Okay. That would be our so. well. That would be our hope that we receive at least those two bids and maybe more. Possibly. Maybe more. Yeah, it'd be mm -hmm. nice to get some more. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, council members. Yes. Were the bids uh, within the budget, or were they over the budget too? We they were. were they were both quite close. Okay. Right. Nothing but they were we within overcome. our budget then. Okay. So I have a question. So when when the bids come back like that. Um, there's no chance to say there's an error. This is this is where the error is. Correct and resubmit. No, that's a, a very deep legal question. And um, federally, there are certain areas that can be altered, um, but the, with this particular bid, no. no, there are no loopholes that either one of these could fit into. Um, they were just blatantly unresponsive bids. If they had been minor, we would have come and asked you to waive the minor irregularity. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they were not. They were significant. They were, yeah. So 10 days, uh, you have to rebid for 10 days, and then how long after that? Well, we would hope to receive them in a timely fashion since both bidders that have already been, been made aware that mm -hmm. we're putting it back out, but mm -hmm. we still need to give the rest of the contracting public the opportunity. So to by the ten. next council meeting, we so. should be able to award a contract? No. 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 A 30 day no, open bid usually. Right 30 it, days? Isn't it going to be open for 30 days? Again? That's a 10 minimum. I think we so could do the, the 10 first, since we it's did the 10, 10 already. We, okay. We, yeah. I, for sure. Uh, Mayor, I, I just don't see us being able to meet that schedule. We'll be close, but I don't see us being able to meet that schedule. Is there any way that we can get things done any faster than a month out? I mean, that just seems excessive since we've already waited. I mean, we've been working on this, what did you say, since October 11th, but we actually approved oh, it yeah. in September. Correct, but the, the entire bid packet needed to be put together. And all oh, no, I understand, but what I'm saying is we've already done it, so now just right. rebid it. It should be right. pretty a easy. It's already put together. A rebid will be quicker than the, the, the last time frame yeah. that we watched go by, for sure. So it might not be the 30 days. Um, no, that 10, was just mentioned. 10 days is the minimum. get to the next meeting. Okay. That's a so private bid. It's not going to happen. No, that's no, not what he means. He's going to go out, and it, they'll have to have a bid back in ten days, and then yep. we have to wait for bureaucracy. So minimum 20. 20 days. Don't you think? Minimum. So to get it out. Okay, let, let's let's do this. Uh, what what I'm getting from the council is that. If we can do it sooner, you would like to. Yes. Um, we need to make sure also that the work, if we w could award it and then start the work, we would want to make sure that the work could be completed before we have the in mass thing. So right. we can look at that, that schedule. Okay. If it would help to have a special meeting, we will contact you. Okay. Uh, but we're at the point now where because of the rebidding that we may actually not be able to, it, in other words, it won't make a difference to do it faster because the work will happen after Schedule. the, the uh, scheduled event. Okay. Okay. So, um, but we'll look at it. But uh, based on my understanding when the scheduled events are, it probably. Right, and if it's necessary to have a special meeting, then let's do it. Okay, we'll, okay. we will do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number three. Uh, oh, okay. We need a, a vote, no. please, Madam Mayor. We need a vote Work on rejection. Reject okay. Yes. Do I have a motion to re I, do I have a motion? 
I'll make a motion that we reject the bids for the community theater heating and air conditioning upgrade project and rebid the project. Based on city staff reports, I second that. Based on the city staff reports? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Disappointing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so item number three, discussion possible action. Adopt a grants management policy and direct staff to implement it. Steve, Mr. Ma oh, Thanks. and that's Jeanette. Okay. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members Your of council. Your last item oh, before it you seems retire. so much fitting <laughs> <laughs> that this is my, this falls to me to present to you as one of my, one of my final duties for the city. Um, this grants policy is actually something that we've been mostly implementing and using for the last couple of years. Um, with, uh, with one exception, and I'll, and I'll t tell you about that here in a minute. Um, one of the things I wanna make sure and, and talk to you about a little bit is that grants are not free money. I know everybody likes to consider them as free, but they are not free. They come with price tags, and that price tag is in the form of staff resources primarily. Uh, and it match. doesn't matter if we use consultants to prepare grants and, and projects for us. There is always some staff time that's necessary to help coordinate, help get things to you for consideration and approval. Um, there, it's just not, don't think of it as free money. Think but of it, I'm sorry. Honestly, Jeanette, aren't most grants nowadays requiring a match of some kind? They do. Whether it be uh, our work on the ground or actually actual cash match. There are very few free grants anymore. I mean, I know, I realize they're not free, but what I mean without us putting up something for something, it. Something, that's correct. Yes, and match can be significant, can be incredibly significant, not only direct match, but also the long-term commitments to either staffing in a program, for example, um, or maintenance, you know, like the Greenway, there, there's, there's costs to the city for, for taking, on, taking on those projects and taking on those, those, uh, those services to the community. Now, obviously, I'm mostly familiar with projects, and actually, we get them done, we move on, and we get do the next one. But there's a lot of grants out there for programs as well, and some of our other departments tap into, tap into those for their operations. Um, Another, another point that I wanted to bring out and, and mention and highlight is that consultants are not always your best resource. They are a great resource, but they are not always the best one. They are very expensive um, to, to use for grant writing, um, and they, they are not invested in the community like somebody who is local, and who knows the partnerships and the people and the stuff that has come before to get us to a solution that works for us. So when you're thinking about grants in the future, keep those things in mind because, because it's, they're important and they commit the city to long-term costs um, that, that can, can have a significant impact on the bottom line. What this policy does, and, and part of why we are recommending formal adoption, is um, this formal adoption takes, take, will accomplish two different things. One, it, it, it's a framework for all of the city departments to follow. Um, and that will ins ensure that appropriate coordination is happening, that the finance director knows about the various grants and the grant sources that come in. For example, if we get a department that goes after a federal grant, she, she will need to know about that because it affects the threshold of when we need audits and special audits for federal dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's, there's some nuances to the grant process that, that are pretty important to keep that coordination going. Um, the other thing that's new in this policy that formal adoption would do is would, this policy would authorize the city manager to sign grant proposals up to $25,000 where there is no match or no resolution required from you in advance. This will expedite small grants, but it will not cut you out of the loop because if, um, if those grants are awarded, the finance department would be coming, making sure that that comes back to you for, uh, for accepting those funds and then supplementing the budget with those, those grant dollars. 
So you're not cut out of the loop, it just helps expedite some of those smaller kinds of projects that might come up. So um, with that, I'm happy to help answer any questions, but the reality is that it goes to the staff who will, who will be here to help implement this. And thank you for your years of work. Um, you've done an amazing job of getting grants and keeping track of projects and, and making sure that everything's done well. So thank you for that. We thank really you. appreciate it. Now, having said that, right. um, we've got a whole <laughs> list. Oh, I was going to talk about this and who's going to do it. So uh, two things. First off, um, uh, it sounds like you might need some work after you are retired. <laughs> uh, I need to check with the boss. Uh, you think she might get bored? Well, I, I think we have a, a local, perhaps a local expert that's all of those things, but that's that's neither here nor there. It's just a thought. Um, second is the procedures. I think there's the first one sh the, for city council. It's it's missing one right before that, and that's um, that's where we approve the proposal for. Uh, for a grant, it's right. not where it just comes to us when it's all done. Right. So we need to know the first city council. I think the first procedure for city council should be uh, approving uh, the, the the proposal to go out and seek that grant. That's not here at all. It looks like it's at way mm -hmm. after the fact, mm -hmm. according to this policy. Sometimes timing will not allow that. The twenty-five thousand dollar one I got. The, the other ones, we need to see it. Absolutely, absolutely. And nor the normal process would be that, that as you know, Public Works brings those applications in mm -hmm. to be approved because normally when there's match or a resolution required, um, we need to have that as a part of the application package. I, so, I just don't see that. That's not number one. And, so, and that's a great yeah. point. So we can get that added before we finalize yeah. this up. Please. Right. right. That's what I was going to say. We could come back and have that as part of the policy. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I think it's a great idea. And, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we'll see her around. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> I told you I was going to beat you out. <laughs> Barely. Oh. Barely. <laughs> like maybe gotcha. a month. Yeah. yeah. So First, are there any other questions? Well, yes, it, Norm. It says under policy, item four, grants requiring a map to city Bonds must be approved by the city council. Grant applications require the approval of either the city manager or city council. Mm -hmm. So that's, we can't apply for them unless the city council approves it. And the city manager can do it if it's 20, less than 25,000. So I don't think you need to amend anything to add anything. Where's, where's the 25,000? It's four. under four. Oh, no, I'm policy. looking at number four. I'm looking for the 25,000. Well, the I, procedure is down number two. Oh, okay. Yeah, the 25,000. I think there's a disconnect between the policy and the procedure. Yeah, I agree. It needs to be spelled out. I mean, in it's a the proper order. Yeah, no, we don't like loopholes. Mm -hmm. no. um, what are the wishes of the council? Any other questions? Or To add that just for clarity. Add that in the add policy right portion. So under the procedure portion, it's procedure. that the city council oh. would, would be the one approving the proposed grants oh. over that, over that $25,000 amount. I mean, because at that point, city manager's coming to ask ask uh, our approval for for direction of city staff to actually go and do this. I mean, you just gave an impassioned uh, talk about this to say, hey, it takes a lot of time, and so uh, and the importance of, of obligating the city to a potential matching fund. I think that has to be under the. I mean, you're talking about approving and accepting. Those are active active acts by the city council. That's not a policy. So if you have approve and accept for number one of the of, of, the, of granting the funds and the, and, the, and so forth, I think they need that one right before that, which is for proposals. I agree. Because it has to be voted on. I agree. Okay. And then yeah, I've approved proposal prior to submission. Does that capture your okay. comment? Okay. Prior to um, submission, uh, with right. Noting the the exception that with the twenty five thousand dollars, so it's not confusing any future yeah, okay. council. Yeah. Well, and, and I do have a question about that, actually, the 25000 So it, it's my understanding that it costs money, even a $25,000 grant costs staff time. Costs, I mean, do we want to be able to approve grants, any grants? 
How, okay, it's so, a cost us money. So that's a good question. Yeah. So the question then is, how many of those do you actually see where it's like, oh my God, we need to do this now, we, we can't bother the city council? How many of them are there? There have been some, I know. There have been a couple. It, it doesn't happen very no. often, but there have been some opportunities <coughs> that we've had to pass on because we couldn't get them to you quickly enough. Could you give an example by any chance? Can you think of Steve, I'm not sure if I have an example because okay. I, I think they come from other departments. Uh, well, quick enough would be within, I mean, we can have some, before something gets on the agenda. So, yeah. so there, there are times where there are applications that have been put in by, um, by departments and, and you would probably know about one of them that I don't necessarily know about ahead of time. So we're trying to rein those in. That hasn't happened very often, but you know, it has an application has been put in. I remember a few grants, but I don't have any idea what they were, where um, prior to going to council, um, we applied for the grant. I think, I'm trying to remember if we actually got any of them. It's the, it's I remember the one. Do you remember? Sure. I do. Um, the, the Arboretum, the folks who are running the Arboretum had submitted a, a, a I think it was about a $25,000 grant to the McConnell Foundation. They were looking to try and um, make some upgrades to their electrical services for the Arboretum. And it was on a very quick turnaround. But we, we had to hold them up to get your approval. And that, was, that would be a case where if we could submit it and get it and it was actually awarded, we'd be bringing it back to, to get that supplemented into the budget. So that's an example. We have a question. Okay. Looking at it from a different point of view is, uh, what's the dollar value of, of um, contracts a city manager can issue? Um, we don't actually have a formal policy on that, but I've used twenty-five thousand dollars because that's what I've right. used in other It'll cities. Be the same. Yeah, I and then and then occasionally uh, the the other cities' policies were um, if we thought it was going to cost twenty-five, but it costs less than thirty. Sometimes, usually, I try to bring those to you though. Yeah, um, unless it was absolutely urgent. So right. yeah, I, I'm Other fine with the twenty-five thousand because I think okay. it applies with purchasing and with the grants. So. Okay. okay. And okay. just so you know, I, my intent is not to. I, I prefer you knowing about grants. Oh yeah. Ahead of time. So um, if it's something uh, incredibly, you know, we need to apply right away, you know, I'll work something out uh, with you, and then we'll also let you know what we're applying for, okay. and most importantly, when we get something. Right. So, so, accept it. so I think it's a, a reasonable, um, okay. it's a reasonable way to look at it. So, okay. with, so with questions, the, maybe with uh, number two uh, and reports back to the city council. Sure, okay. that's fine. So if you just add and reports back to the city council, then you'll you'll always be aware of what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, you, we want to see this before we vote on it, right? But we, well, we can bring it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. But what we what we wanted to do is to, to get it out there. This has been something that's been uh, floating around for a little while, as uh, as uh, Jeanette mentioned. I haven't really forgotten your name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> uh, I think it has more to Not do yet. with you know, some other. <laughs> anyway, um, so if if this looks pretty good with that addition, we can put that addition in and bring it back to you. For, the next um, for those additions. Those additions. Yeah. Okay, I'll look at the one. Still be here. Yeah, there was a and first one. Report back. Yeah. Oh, Liz report back. It. Thank you. Liz has it. And yeah. then at All the right. end, She's yeah, right, and report back to city council. Okay. Great. So okay. With, with that. Um, Good job. Yeah. Yes. Good job. Thank you, so, Jeanette. So I just, uh, hey, this is Jeanette's last city council. Last, the last city rock. council. I promise not to do very much. <laughs> Because she would rather, you know, Jeanette works in front of the scenes sometimes, but a lot of it is behind the scenes, mm -hmm. getting stuff done. A lot of things you don't even know what happens, but <laughs> she's been there through all kinds of projects, not just building things, but also great advice mm -hmm. and making things happen and sometimes getting excited so that things will happen. <laughs> and I just have really appreciated working with you, Jeanette. We'll, we'll go through the retirement thing tomorrow, but... <laughs> I, this, this is this is her last meeting. This is her yeah. last meeting. We're yes. standing up. That's yes. Yes. Standing up. <laughs> standing up. Heartfelt 
Thank you, Jeanette. Okay, so now we're into city manager and staff reports. Steve. So uh, most of the staff reports tonight are going to be from, uh, actually all of the staff reports tonight <laughs> are gonna be from Mr. Bray. Yeah. And we just, what we wanted to do is, uh, sometimes we work a lot on projects and then suddenly maybe make them appear on your agenda. And what I wanted to do tonight is kind of give you a, an idea of some things that are in the works, or more accurately, I want Matt to give you an idea, so that when it uh, comes before you, and it may be in different formats, you'll at least know what's, uh, what's happening. So this is a future preview. Sure, so I have some handouts to distribute. First, um, we had a few of these larger maps that these two first pages go in one set if we can circulate those around. <clears throat> then I have some smaller ones we can pass out. Also. Okay. Well, I should probably keep one so I know what I'm talking about. You should probably do that. Oh, is that all? Larger ones, I guess. Yeah, but I'm blind. And the smaller <laughs> ones? <laughs> the smaller ones are identical to the larger ones. I just wanted you to... We went downtown and had some larger colors blown up. So what we're looking at is the intersection of Minor Street and 4th Street in front of the Franco-American. Some of you keep the small ones, some of you can keep the big ones. So they're all the same. This is minor yes. and Yes, fourth. they're all the same. Yes. Just keep passing the big ones down. Yes. <laughs> right, right. I like the big ones. Okay. The big ones were additional okay. cost today, so we just had a couple mm -hmm. sets. Well, they don't have two. Yeah, they do. They're oh, they don't? Two. I think that's okay. the same as that. Do you that. need another one? Okay. I think they, they have do. the big They're ones. Good. So oh, what's your... I need a small one, then. Is this, is this the only one I have? It's the same exact. <laughs> really? Yes. That doesn't, look, that doesn't look like this one. <clears throat> No, it, looks like, it looks That's like this one, which is the one he has. There's one here too. You guys can share like we are. No, no I'm good. I'm good with this. I just needed to. This is the only one I had, so I needed this one. Okay. All right. So what we're discussing now in my staff report is the Minor Street Storm Drain slash Crosswalk alteration that we've spoken about for the last year and a half or so. Um, this goes back to the lack of a proper ADA ramp directly in front of the barbershop. Mm -hmm. This goes back to the flower planter and the conveyance of the stormwater down the northerly gutter of Minor Street. Um, as you've all heard in the past, we've had multiple, multiple complaints <coughs> about this area. We've had some requests mm -hmm. to look at the ADA. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it was about six months ago I came and asked and um, you graciously gave us a budget appropriation and we went to the city engineer and had the study done. So we've surveyed the entire street. We know exactly where we are in height. Um, so we know how to get the water out of that area. Um, Fred Lucero, one of the city engineers, also has your second page there. So I'll, I'll talk to it. That's the least expensive option. But I do want to go to the front page that has the colored lines on it. So in essence, the water flows down Minor Street on the northerly gutter and it hits a flower planter that juts out into the street. This is the one we've called a bulb out in the past, a pedestrian bulb out. That's the one that has the ADA ramp in it that doesn't meet code. <clears throat> so Fred and I chewed on this and chewed on it and chewed on it. And we, we looked at how to, a way to get some storm drain elements in there. And I think most folks in town are aware that um, there's mine shafts underneath Minor Street. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks don't understand there's a concrete street underneath Minor Street mm -hmm. with hot mix asphalt on top of it. So when you try mm -hmm. to cut down in there, you never really truly know what you're getting into until you mm -hmm. get the saw buried. And then once you start digging, when you get underneath the concrete, you don't know how deep the mine shafts are. Um, and then the old pipes that aren't on our maps and all of that other stuff that we find every time we dig down on the oldest street in town. So that said, the red line that comes out into the street, there's a little dot there that shows, we were proposing in option one to go ahead and sink a drainage inlet <clears throat> on the westerly up, uphill side of that flower planter and drag it out into the middle of the street underground and install a storm drain down to uh, third and then, I'm sorry, where am I? That's third. Third, yeah. Yeah. and then over to North Street to tie into the existing storm drain, which oh. then convey oh, down okay. to Main. So that's the bottom in the middle of the street, that red one. Mm -hmm. the, the light blue is uh, 
another option that we went through was to stick it underneath the, the sidewalk and try to turn this project into a, an ADA crosswalk ramp storm drain sidewalk project um, mm -hmm. and replace a section of that old WPA sidewalk that's in there. It's not ideal at all. It goes underneath the uh, balcony of the Franco American Hotel. Mm -hmm. So it would be uh, a bear. But mm -hmm. And then again, we don't exactly know without digging some holes there where that concrete street layer is or how deep the top of the mine shafts are. So, I mean, my, my gravest concern with either of those is that we get going on that and then uh, take the fourth pole on the backhoe and you just found yourself a mine shaft where you wanted to put your storm drain pipe. So these are the two options Fred and I started with. And <clears throat> um, the second page is really where we hit, <laughs> struck gold, I think. It's the most elegant solution. Um, and that one, this one actually came from Fred Lucero. He's an engineer, not an architect yet. <clears throat> Fred and I are calling this option three. Um, option three does not require digging in the street, which is, ex it's just a lot less money, obviously, mm -hmm. with all of these unknowns that I've spoken to. Um, obviously, I, we didn't expect to get a 3D model of this, and some of you may not be completely familiar reading plans, and I understand that. But the black lines <clears throat> in front of the Franco, they're, you've got existing flower planter, and what Fred has done is uh, proposed to raise the concrete curb there, one way or the other. We haven't decided exactly how yet. Uh, raise that 24 inches from where it is now and gradually step it up. And then bring that, that taller curb around and then completely block off that ADA ramp of concern. Um, and then down to the end, and you'll see down on the east side there, there's that, the, the black crosswalk lines, that would be not quite out the front door of the tap house, but off of that ADA ramp, straight across, and then an alteration of that existing flower bed to get an ADA cross slope accessible sidewalk into the front of the jewelry shop. So it's, uh, it's not final, this is still in design, but I wanted you to see it, I wanted uh, you to see the work that Fred's put into it, and there has been a lot of time. Like I said, we, with the, the funding that I, we were allowed, we, we got a survey that we drastically needed to get this to, and you know, it's really a storm drain project. We need to get that water out so we're not flooding those businesses. And also make that, that crosswalk maybe work a little better downtown. So it's still, and if you recall, um, I believe I mentioned in the past that we touch one ADA ramp on that corner, we have to touch them all. So mm -hmm. one of the most elegant parts about this option three is that we would just do away with the one in front of yeah. the Franco, mm -hmm. the trouble, nice. and, and it's moved down to the east side. Um, and all the cross slopes work, all the grades work for conveyance of storm drains, and it's, it really ends up being an above ground project, and we don't have to go under, we really don't want to go down on Meyer Street really at any given time. I see that being the most feasible way. I mean, we had this discussion when this all came up of moving it to, that was one of the places we discussed doing this right. originally. Mm -hmm. and I like that option the best as far as cost-wise, so I'm sure it'll okay. be the most cost-effective. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to get you back up to speed to know that that project hadn't stalled. We've been in the background chomp, chomping on it. Um, since we all last spoke about it. And then also that our, um, let you know our next steps would be moving forward in a cost analysis between option three and option two, yeah. just so we have, you can, you can see that cost mm -hmm. difference that I'm just telling you it's more expensive right now. I think it's worth the time to, to get some, some rough engineering estimates yeah. on both. Um, so a decision can be made in a future meeting to move yeah. forward with one or the other. Good. So awesome. In in your planning, could you please um, throw in the mix the concerns that I have with how disruptive it is to the businesses on Minor Street? Mm -hmm. So whatever is least disruptive, right. sure to right. accomplish right. the same end result would be really important to me right. because they've had enough disruption over the years. Mm -hmm. well, we will take that into account. And that's yes. really important. But I really like the idea that it also wouldn't be as invasive because we know about the tunnels 
um, underneath all the businesses and the streets and you know one wrong move could be pretty devastating to the downtown they probably also like the idea they're not going to be flooded Exactly. Yeah. Pretty tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier on the storm drain just to find one of the mine shafts and just divert it to one yeah. of those? Uh, <laughs> probably, be, probably easier us on us in the short term. <laughs> that whole erosion, underground so erosion thing. Found yeah. out what got undermined first. Yeah. 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 Until it comes up under the yeah. house. Or something. Yeah. I was going to say, all of those businesses on Miner Street have those stairs that go down, and then mm -hmm. they usually have a locked door that opens into a mine shaft. Mm -hmm. yes. We don't want right. the water like coming had the problem the Greenhorn Reservoir it mm -hmm. popped up down at the end of the road at Jimmelson Ford and yeah, right. Mission Game and all that right. it made a mess there so well this looks really good and so it you're calling this the much. elegant downtown I option. thought what, when when I first saw that design like pop it. up I, I thought it was an elegant answer it does yes. it looks it's very nice yes. we're, we're, and an architect didn't even do it no Thank and you. we're gonna we're gonna try to make sure that it fits in obviously it's not historical there, there wasn't a brick line down there Mm -hmm. But we're going to try to make it so that it fits in as well as possible while still getting the, the gotcha. job done. Mm -hmm. So we may have to talk about that a little bit with an actual right. architect, but uh, maybe not. Right. So those are, <laughs> any of you want to keep those? You, you, you oh, keep keep? Sure. Yeah. Oh. Just, just remember that they're preliminary. Right. So they're they, they are changed. draft. I didn't stamp them draft. Oh, yeah, you did. We yeah, did. did. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's not enough for all of us. <laughs> so. That's okay. Then, <laughs> moving on from that project that I... There's one small one. Can, can we get more copies of this? Yes. Okay. I can get you more copies. Okay. I can have that one. Oh. There you go. I didn't take too many notes on it. So moving on from that project that I haven't been able to speak to you about in some time, there's also the matter of the uh, ADA restrooms here at City Hall and, and for the chambers. So similar to that project just mentioned, and I don't have drawings to share with you on this one tonight, but staff and a local architect have also come up with a number of options for the ADA restroom for this facility in, that, in the city hall. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just quickly go over just so you have an idea of what we're looking at. Right, we've got about three options right now. First is a remodel of the lobby of city hall, and that includes uh, dropping the counter down so we have an ADA accessible counter, ADA accessible doors, and the bathroom. Somehow, there's a, a couple options in option one on where exactly how to remodel the front of the building to include the ADA accessible restroom. Um, that was the number one we, we, we looked at. And then um, second, there was a, an ADA restroom addition to the council chambers itself, um, either off of one of the side walls with a expansion of this awning that's out front possibility of taking that awning all the way to the ground so it's more of an atrium breezeway feel because if we install an ADA restroom out this door um, it's going to be serving that facility also mm -hmm. so it needs to be inside accessible all the way from this ADA restroom to the counter that type of thing but, but that doesn't I mean <coughs> that doesn't give us access um, in here that's some of the options in number two is where do we where do we put that door does it go there does it go here does this get remodeled mm -hmm. so that's that's that one how it's moving <coughs> um, but it, that's as, I'll take that point into number two okay. because that's uh, that's the reason we're trying to do this is make the entire City Hall facility not just that building City Hall compliant mm -hmm. we're trying to get the entire facility done mm -hmm. so then um, <clears throat> third would be to install a separate prefabricated ADA restroom adjacent to the council chambers. So either out here towards the flower beds or out there in the lawn or somewhere out front. Something like a prefab that we drop into the parks when we build, built the Deer Creek Greenway. Oh. They're quick, they're dirty, they're cheap. You just drop them on a slab, you pull them right. up and you're in. Right. Um, so that's that's the third option that we have. So Hopefully they're not dirty. And again, <laughs> this is how it's similar to the last <laughs> project is that I don't have numbers to share with you on it. I just wanted to get you back up to speed that we are moving forward on that project also. We also do have three options and we will be coming to you at a later date with some pricing on options. Well, I'd like to voice my opinion on the ADA compliancy at the front desk because it's, I think that is mm -hmm. a very mandatory thing. Mm -hmm. um, in today's, a lot. today's world, we are, we are not up to snuff on that and that's 
needs to be done first and right. foremost to me whether <laughs> whether we have a bathroom right. here or not we right. need to be ADA compliant at our front desk absolutely yeah. we will ensure yeah. that that's added into all three options and or look at doing it right. beforehand if it's going to take too long to get to these options yeah okay. that could be I think you're what you're almost saying is that could be a separre thing there is one one plan that would do it all at, at the same time because of the way that we're rearranging mm -hmm. but the other ones would could do it separately so you're correct. because of the way what because of the way that the the first the option it would it would reconfigure a lot of the front of oh I see in yeah. there so it would be Got part it. of it and again it all goes back to that what the, the least intrusive right. method of getting right. this done because we've got customers every, you know all yeah. week long so so that's where we are on that um, any other questions on the ADA so no, then I'm going to dive into the uh, the MS4 trash amendment talks that we've had over the past year or so and get you back up to speed on that so staff is continuing to work with our stormwater consultant that we hired NCE um, and identifying the steps forward that are needed to get us into track one which is what the decision of council was we had track one and track two with track one being the the uh, trash separators as near to the outfalls as we could and least amount of maintenance and then track two was all upstream catching all the trash upstream at the inlet so that choice was already decided on right and council. this is something we have to do by and law so we're the right, state of California. right that's so, right so it was chosen that we're moving with track one. Um, it's still continuing to prove to be the logical choice. Um, and this, really the scope of that project on track one, it, it allows the city to easy, more easily go for grant money. And there is word on the street of stormwater money funding becoming available um, in a time frame that could work out fairly well for us to get us into the first steps of track one and as you recall that's a 10-year program we threw out some big scary numbers at you a year or so again Eight but, million um, dollars. we've right seven and a half or whatever yeah. we were wherever we were but you know that's that 10-year program mm -hmm. um, to get to full compliancy but we did have to make that choice we you did choose track one mm -hmm. we have to file our paperwork stating how we're going to get into track one by December so that's where staff and I are working with Marcy Camerath and uh, her firm NCE to get all of our ducks in a row for December. Um, that's where we are. You know, the track two problem was the the ongoing maintenance forever. You know, I, I probably beat this to death with you before, but it was the ongoing maintenance and monitoring forever that had me shaking and sweating in my boots. Um, so that's why I say I think track one is still the logical choice. Um, can you bring us up to date on the court cases that are um, going on? Weren't, weren't there a couple of cities that filed suit against the state for requiring this? He told us about that, right? I have yet to see any outcome okay. of yeah. any cases of that sort. So it's, I, you know, a lot Some of- Some cities have filed though. I don't know how many have filed well, I, I just say I haven't seen any outcomes of anything. We're, we're kind of our own special case. I mean, we're all, we've all been thrown in the same pot, choose track one, choose track two, come up with some money from somewhere and become compliant by this date, you know, so. Well, that's my question then. Um, some funding may be available. I hear you keep saying some money. Do we know, since this is such an expensive project, 7.8 million, right, mm. potentially, um, how much of that potentially can we get in grant funding? It, it's still from the a state? moving target. Madam Mayor, yeah, it's still a moving target. It's it, as with any other um, source of, you know, Prop One funding or anything like that. It's all in how diligent staff is on the preparation of the applications. It's fitting the the specifications of how that particular grant is written and what the multi benefits are. You know, you, um, it's just as any other grant. They all have their idiosyncrasies. That you you just need to be diligent and. and dive down on so so if if we go to the to look for the funding from prop one and i've heard our pace engineers yesterday in our meeting correct in our talk meeting about yesterday. those types of things is that something we'd work with pace on yes actually uh, curtis Good. curtis paget from pace went to weaverville today to speak with um, some north coast folks um, i'm setting up a, 
a meeting conference call now between Pace, myself, uh, our stormwater consultants, NCE, and then uh, another a lady that gave us a call a couple days ago out of San Luis Obispo, and she works with the Watershed Council. And so there's some, uh, I'm not saying the bright shining lights on the horizon, but it's, it's looking better today than it was yesterday in my world, so. Mm. So it's kind of an unfunded mandate unless you can get a grant. Correct. And even if you can't get a grant, it pro I'm most I'm 99% sure it will not be 100% of the cost, right? Correct. Right. And additional staff time, as Jeanette spoke to, where mm -hmm. it's a lot the, of staff uh, the, time. the work that goes on in the background with my staff during uh, those it. types of projects is mind boggling to me when yeah. we finally get to the end and, and see the end of the tunnel and come out the other side of the project. It's just, you look back yeah. and it just blows me away how much work goes into it with staff yeah. level. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. We're at applying and reporting and all the ongoing project right. work. Uh, Mr. Adams. That was a question. I'm very sorry to interrupt. I know something, a very little bit about this issue given my background. 2017, the court case came down to the appellate court that basically said you cannot have an unfunded mandate from the state of California. In this case, it was against regional water quality control to go ahead and go ahead. The absolute thing that they were talking about was storm water drainage. I think what that means is you need to go back, look at it again, okay? Because whatever the rules were that the state went ahead and put against you, they changed with the 2017 ruling. If, in other words, it comes back to an unfunded mandate. Mm -hmm. The state said that's not good. The court said that's not good. You need to look into that. Oh, and my. I wish I had the yeah, particulars that on down. that line, but that's something Please. that you really need to look into. Mr. Well, Brady. we have, actually, we have an attorney, Don Hanyan's our attorney. He's, right. He was here last time. He's not here tonight. But that's a question we should ask Don about the well, uh, lawsuit about unfunded Absolutely. mandates. I appreciate your input. We'll, well, we'll get back with yeah. Don and make sure that that actually pertains to our small MS4 phase two permit, right? Because there are multiple types of permits out there. Yes, the There's the exactly MS4 permit. You're yeah. About. Okay. And again, look back at it and, and call them. You need to call the state, and that's that's kind of my position as an outside consultant in this field. Uh -huh. that, you know, don't let them push you into a corner and tell you you're going to do this and you're going to. My question would be: You just look at them and say, "Okay, show me where the funding's coming from." You'll be surprised. Oh, they'll tell us to get it from Prop 1, but that's that's a challenge. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Ironically, in 2017 was when this did came, come yes, down. Right. right, they asked us, but they didn't ask us, they told us the state right. of California mandated that we had to do this, and then pretty much told us to find the money. Okay, Matt. So other than that, from my staff report, um, the this week, uh, I believe it was Sunday, it was located. Uh, Monday, we sent some guys out to take a look at it. Tuesday we went out and fixed it. There was a sizable leak on the Fall Creek line uh, just south of Bogus Creek on the hill that comes up out of Bogus Creek. And it was nothing catastrophic. It was nothing that uh, made our tanks drain down. Nobody saw a blip in our water service in town and that's because of the professionalism that we have out on the, on the ground in Public Works. Uh, ben Miller and Rob Taylor took their crews out, hammered down a 12 or 14 hour day and got it fixed. Um, I just, it's kudos to them. I wanted to get that out there tonight and let you folks know. I did send uh, the city manager very late tonight uh, a series of pictures of the leak. If you're interested, I can ask Steve to forward that on to you. I'll, I'll forward um, it. They're always interesting to see. A, a lot of folks never seen the 24 inch pipe that runs out all the way to. to 26 miles. Yeah. <laughs> and to it, our water it, source. It's pretty impressive when it springs a leak, but it's, it's even more impressive <laughs> to me every time I walk up to the hole and the, and the guys are down in there because we have to open it up. We have to stair step it to meet all the OSHA regulations. You can't just get right down to the leak and fix it. And it's just this gigantic holes in the ground with this gigantic pipe. And, and it just, it strikes me every time how powerful that pipe is when I see it, you know, when we dig it up. So. How old is um, the pipe? Oh gosh, you're going to call me on that. 60, <laughs> was it 67? No, 71, yeah. wasn't it? I don't know the exact date. So we'll call 60 it. 60. Old. 
we'll call it, well, we'll call it 50-ish, you know. <laughs> when someone asks you how old you are and you're in, yeah. you do sound old. Yeah, like 50, <laughs> yeah. you say old, then you say I should know that date. Right. Oh, I see. There's a rock out there we can go look at. Yeah, we can go, yeah. we can go oh, oh, look at the rock. rubbing yeah. on the rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so yeah. Days. Other than that, um, so that was buttoned up really quick. We're striping out the crosswalks and stop bars on North Oregon Street. That is 99.999% done out there. Um, I saw our street sweeper driving down it today, which is I good. Too. It's a good thing when I see that going yeah. down North yeah. Oregon Street. Um, and that's all I've got. All right. So, Great. don't you think his are more interesting than mine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. So, with Very that, we're not arguing with you. Yeah, I noticed that. So, with that, I'm done. <laughs> oh, good job, yeah. Steve. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for the information. Okay, so uh, any other staff reports? No, I'm done. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's done. I wasn't staff kidding. reports? <laughs> no. Any other staff? Oh, we had a police officer in the back. He disappeared when I said yeah. staff reports. Okay, so back to the council. Wait. Oh, I'll just. I'll bring oh, there he is. Up. Hi. <laughs> Do you have a staff report? <laughs> Put him on the spot. Any questions? I'll be happy to answer. You guys have. So how are the streets tonight? Nice and quiet. I kind of just started. Everything's quiet so far. Good. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dwayne. Uh, I'll start off. We uh, had our Siski Homelessness Coalition meeting today, and mm -hmm. it was uh, rather informative. We, it was. We had uh, Tori from down in the COC down in the Reading area come up here and, and talk with us and, and uh, gave us a lot of uh, huge numbers that uh, hopefully we'll be able to see in our future <laughs> to help out this uh, this driving problem. Um, a couple things on that too. Um, I'm going to go to another thing on this homelessness also. I got a, an email too that we actually um, had a YouTube video that was performed here in the Wairik area that probably not many people have seen. Um, it's a 14 minute YouTube video that actually talks about Wairika and our homelessness and how that the city and the county have all pulled together to address this situation, and it's actually, it's like I said, it's a YouTube video, and it's really cool. Who did it? Um, uh, filmed by Steve Pestana. Pestana? Did he interview anybody? From yes, that? he interviewed, okay. so it's on... This, the actual topic is Six People, Ten Questions, 2018, Wyoming, California, is what the title of it is. So, yeah, I'll forward that to you. Please. It's, it's, it's interesting. Thank you. Um, okay. We, uh, I did attend uh, the Measure L fundraiser at the Little Red Schoolhouse mm -hmm. this week. It was well attended. Um, really neat to see people and want to support Measure L, which is supporting our historical cemeteries. If people don't know what all that's about. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people would like to fill you in on that. It's, it's very important that we don't lose the funding to support this, these cemeteries, because a lot of these cemeteries are, are actually starting to work in a negative bracket now. So anytime we can help support them, it's, it's gonna be much needed. Um, and that's about it for right now. Okay, you're done? Okay, thank you. Council Member Pacheco. Um, I too attended the Measure L mm -hmm. uh, at the Little Schoolhouse. That was pretty cool. There were a lot, mm -hmm. of, uh, a lot of interesting uh, uh, people there, including uh, Lisa Nixon. The great, 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 great. <laughs> yeah, from, from the cemetery. Awesome. Former Council Member what? Foster. Uh, no, Welcome. So Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, that um, was I also attended the uh, League of Local Agencies uh, um, dinner uh, in mm -hmm. Wheaton. I won't steal your thunder, Madam Mayor. I'll leave you for that. Um, there was also a candidates forum that I attended that, uh, as a spectator. 
watching the participants. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's right here. And you didn't heckle us too bad. Only had to make one clarification. <laughs> it's yes. our attorney. <laughs> Not an unofficial attorney. Yeah. Yeah. I will be going to, there's Sons of Italy is putting on a polenta dinner this, uh, this Saturday in wheat, so that should be tasty. And then uh, the Masons, uh, this Sunday, their Sunday breakfast, third Sunday breakfast will be this Sunday, and it will be for CASA, All right. the oh. Court Appointed Special Advocates. Great. So that's the charity of the month. That was one of my questions to <laughs> ask you. Mm. Madam Mayor, can I add something to on my end? I forgot something. If, if, Rob's done. if you must. Uh, um, <laughs> One more thing. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, so as a firefighter, I went to the hair salon oh, uh, yes. accident. So oh, my oh, yes. That was, uh, I was there. I mean, now it's kind of okay, but you know, when you go to that, I mean, I'm looking down and looking for bodies because it's mm -hmm. like the whole that car just went right in, barreled right in. I mean, you yep. see that and you see people there, and there was, there was this little old lady and she was like in the in the back part and she's sitting there you know she had just gotten her hair done and she's still sitting there and her eyes are like this and she says uh i just watched the car coming towards me i'm thinking oh my god it's like six feet away from her and i i mean no one well now no one was seriously injured. Now you're stealing my tell. thunder. I had a bird's eye view. well you you can still have that thunder so here's so here's the thought for for us, and I don't know how to do this without costing businesses too much or whatever, but stores that have parking that, that what do they call this? That's not parallel, it's horizontal parking. Mm -hmm. Stores that have horizontal parking that are not, that don't have a concrete mm -hmm. uh, front right. should have some kind of a, some ball, kind of a bowl. Yeah, the yeah, the what are they called? That's, not, that's not the first time for that no, place. No, that's that's the before. second time I can remember. So they went oh, right over the, the oh, uh, tire wheel or wheel thing? No, they don't have them. Yeah, yeah. Race, uh, race Market, okay. uh, you know, race, since race when it was there, had yeah, cars, free cars, go into it. And my brothers, both brothers, one was a manager, the other one was a maintenance man. He finally installed those, which is why they are there uh, now for, for whatever it is, uh, grocery outlet. Grocery outlet. That's why they are there. Yeah. It's because my brother installed them. And they're not hard. Coffee cans of cement just stacked yeah. up together. We'll do it. Yeah, so so yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'd like to see that as an agenda item for yeah. some sometime. For because that was that was right. a little bit too you don't understand, when I went to that, I literally was looking down yeah. for pools of blood. I wasn't looking up. Yeah, it's so true. was I. Huh? I was looking for my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised at how high it was when I by. It was a big noise. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank okay. you, Madam Mayor. Oh, Dwayne still has Thank you. <laughs> Council Oh, Dwayne has oh. I just, I just wanted to add something that I forgot to put on there. Um, we have a, um, it's going through, the, it's a, the Sheriff's Firewood Program. It's actually through Great Northern Services, and you can get, if, if eligible, you can get a half a cord of wood. So it's kind of a neat thing that people should take advantage of. That the, as you can see, if you're driving by the freeway, you'll see all the wood cutting that goes on over by the old juvenile hall, and that's what that's about. Is they're doing they cut up wood and they give it away, and so you can get to, to anyone or to low. Uh, no, it's for who's eligible. So it's low income. Possible. I'm sure it has to do with that. Okay. Um, to be eligible, sheriff's sheriff's firewood program voucher. Your household must have completed the application process for energy assistance through Great Northern Services at some point in 2018. So basically if you get to energy assistance through Great Northern, you can possibly be eligible for this. So it's kind of a neat a neat program. It's obviously gives them something to do, uh, positive, and it helps out uh, the locals for something really mm -hmm. neat. It is neat. And there's also a program through uh, through that step, through uh, we through Great Northern. That's what I just. That's, oh, that's that was the, the one. Through Great Northern. The it's, through, it's the sheriff's office oh, is okay. doing it through Great Northern. Oh, okay. They're they're the one that splits all the wood. Right. So that's what the program is. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council Member Shesky. Okay. Um, several things. I attended the Lola meeting in we mm -hmm. League of Local Agencies, and then mm -hmm. went to the candidates forum to see the candidates to replace Rob, and. Uh, we went 
went to the grand reopening of the collier center last mm -hmm. week it was very nice they've done a nice job there putting in carpets nice. and refurbished it <laughs> and i um homelessness is not just a problem in wairika because mm -hmm. i ran last saturday ran a 6.2 mile race from bear creek park uh, in medford up to the fairgrounds in central point and I hadn't run that section in two years, and the amount of homeless people on there, the amount of trash was just unbelievable amount of trash. I saw at least a dozen holes cut in the fence with wire cutters so people could get in and access the area. I saw abandoned shopping carts and bicycle frames that had been taken apart. And I talked to some other runners from out of the area, and they said, oh, this is bad. They weren't even going to come back to Medford again oh, because wow. it was so bad. So we're not dealing with the homeless problem alone. If Medford's looking into these tiny houses, they're mm -hmm. trying to put that in one place to help reduce the homeless population. But it's a problem all over. That's all I. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Um, what did you place? <laughs> I got first in my age. There you go. Right. First. 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 Your eighth and ninth. Nice cool. cool. You should have brought yeah. it. It's very colorful. You, okay. you should congratulate. wear your shirts. Yeah. yeah congratulations. Yes. Yeah. He won first in his age division. Mm -hmm. How many people were in your age division? Don't ask too many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people. Right. Okay. <laughs> Mayor oh. Pro Tem Baird. Okay. I too went to the C2C open house. Uh, I was actually part of the. Uh, staffing for it so don't forget to volunteer like I always say and the candidates night and it's nice to know that all the candidate forms are done um, not that we don't enjoy talking to everybody but uh, along with all of our other um, responsibilities as council members it does start to make your weekdays fill up and nights and so it adds up so if we could not off and take a nap any moment now um, I went to the Lola meeting as well. Um, I am still working on the animal control facility, and I think pretty soon I will be interested in asking if I can um, form an ad hoc committee. And I was hoping to invite Norm to be on it with me to help do some of this research, uh, if he's up for it, because the, you two have the homelessness and so many other committees you're on. Rob's leaving, yeah. <laughs> so if Norm has time, I know before your tax season starts. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll talk I to you about I know a volunteer that right. may be around. <laughs> yeah, there you go. She says, I'm gonna be out of town. Okay. And uh, one more thing is this weekend for the first time, I'm going to try zip lining. So if I miss, <laughs> if I miss the next uh, <laughs> meeting, we'll you'll know why. why. <laughs> where, where are you going? <laughs> Gold Hill. Gold Hill. Gold Hill. Gold Hill. I think we need one. Well, there's one. And Greenhorn Park. Up 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 over the lake. Between um, Medford and Klamath Falls, there's called Crater Lake Zip Line. Oh, really? been up there this we'll have to try. hour and a half drive or something, and I want to go up there sometime. Oh, so we yeah. can check it out. I don't have a death wish, really. <laughs> That's it. That's all, folks? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, you guys gave all the reports and were at a lot of the meetings that I was, but I'll, I'll try to be really brief. Um, so um, this morning, uh, Dwayne and I were at the homelessness meeting, and there is going to be a PIT, for those of you that don't know what that is. That's point in time count. Uh, we had our first one last year, uh, and they're going to be having a training for that in December, November. November is our next meeting for homelessness, and December, December is the training, training yeah. because the point in time count will be in January, and we need volunteers. So any of you that are interested in going out and talking to the homeless people um, about where they're staying and how we can help them, we would love to hear from you, right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and we did have a new employee that we met today. Yes. Her name is Eileen. Tori was there, and she works for... Shasta County, but she does the over uh, the COC, the Continuum of Care, which is where we get our funding through for seven counties. Plus, we heard about three more today. So um, there's like four million dollars that comes down through that. Is that what they said, Steve? Steve was there too. 
How much money did they say that comes down through that? A lot. A, a lot. lot of money. There was a bunch of numbers. Except there. last year was the first year that we did our point in time count. The year before, we had not organized our Cisco Homelessness Coalition yet. So the person that said that they were going to be doing the point in time count was very ill. It wasn't done. So we don't have the point in time count from 2016, which is what we'd be funded on this year. So the 2017 count from last year will go toward next year. And so now that we're doing it every year, um, hopefully we should get more funding to help with, with homelessness. Um, and we also had uh, the uh, Beacon of Hope come and speak. If you don't mind, I hate to steal your thunder. We no, were both there. And uh, they're going to be looking to the faith-based community uh, to go out and resolve the issue of having a place for homeless people to go in extremely bad weather. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, we offered to help. Well, anyway, uh, the Beacon of Hope is going to do that. That was uh, Pastor John Kruger and um, Michelle O'Connor. Sure. We we're talking about that, yeah. Okay, um, so I was also at Collier. You guys did a great job. It was a grand reopening mm -hmm. of Collier, and it was a beautiful day, and so it was a That's nice, nice picnic up there. That was really nice. Measure L fundraiser was really very nicely done. I had never been in that old schoolhouse. I'd seen it from the outside, the little red schoolhouse in Lower Greenhorns, beautiful. Cool. Wooden floors, Corey was there. It was beautiful. And, uh, and for those of you that don't know, the majority of people who die nowadays <laughs> are not being buried in caskets. They're being cremated. And cremation is much less expensive, so there's less money that's going to um, the cemetery, the cemetery districts. And so therefore, their income level has been going down, their expenses, of course, as time goes on, goes up. And so they're at a critical point now. So those of you that don't know, we're talking about $7 a year for your improved parcel. It's not very much money, so I would, I would, I think it's a good thing. Uh, Tri-Counties Bank, also, we were invited to Tri-Counties Bank. Um, Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday, but it was called something. It was called Community Banking, I think. Anyway, it was really very nice, and uh, the head honchos of, of Tri-Counties Bank uh, flew in to Montague International from <laughs> Chico. And so it was really, really nice to meet them. And the head guy actually said he's from a small town, too. I asked him which small town. He said Corning. Corning actually has less population than Wairiga, so he could really understand some of our issues here. So that was pretty cool. Um, Lola. So we all went to Lola. I think every one of us, I think we were, weren't we the only one there? No, I think we had uh, in the brand new Catholic Church um, community hall, which was beautiful. It's, I, I think you probably know that the, the Catholic Church burned down in the, in the weed fire. Uh, and so they've rebuilt it and it's absolutely beautiful. And so at that meeting, they were looking for volunteers so I raised my hand, hopefully everybody agrees with me that it's a good idea to have the next quarterly meeting of LOLA, League of Local Agencies, all the cities uh, and um, community services districts within Siskiyou County come. Last time we had it was two years ago, I believe, in April, I believe yes. we had it at the wine bar. So we're looking for a location, okay. anybody has ideas of where to have the dinner and either a caterer or a, a nice restaurant that has a meeting room. Um, and yes, I am indeed glad to be speaking to you here tonight instead of uh, underneath a car in a beauty shop. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty amazing because we heard the whole thing. It was almost like slow motion, glass bursting, water pipes rupturing, all almost like in slow motion in my mind's eye now. And there were seven people in that shop. And it was nothing short of a miracle that nobody got hurt. Somebody, I think our guardian angels were on our shoulders that Has day. Has it been in the paper yet? Yeah, yes. front page. Bless front page. Luckily, I made it out of there before they uh, <laughs> got my picture. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be pretty. Would not be pretty. So with that, I think that's all. We don't have anything else. Closed session? Close se oh, we do have a closed session. So we'll be adjourning to closed session. And thank you all for coming today.